We love it. I, yes, for us, it's, I, I dare you to come to the restaurant with your, you know, a dietary restriction because we always like, we want to feed as many people as we can. And I, I can't imagine for, for me personally, uh, I, I can eat everything. So I'm really lucky, but there's a lot of people out there who can't. So for us, I couldn't imagine having to go to a restaurant and, you, you know, as a vegan, for example, and say, well, you have one option and that's it. I hope you like salad. <laughs> so this microphone is officially on now, so I guess it's my turn to talk. Um, again, I'm Zach Malloy. I'm the owner of Better Half. Um, it is not named after me. It's named after my wife who's foot right here, the Better Half. Um, and today we're going to talk about uh, one of my favorites, fennel. Uh, and I should let you know that this is less of a cooking demo and a little more of almost like an anatomy class. Uh, that's, I think a lot of times we start talking about vegetables and I think especially with a vegetable like this, it's a pretty complex looking vegetable and this is in fact kind of scary and it's huge. Uh, and so a lot of people don't really know what to do with it and you can really use this entire beast and uh, e each part has its own special way that you can use it. And I think that this is a really magical vegetable. This is uh, a perennial plant, it grows uh, kind of year round. It's one of my favorites. So let's, let's talk. I should give you the disclaimer. For me, uh, when it comes to cooking, uh, I, I'm not a big recipe guy. I know that a, le a lot of people like having uh, the directions in front of them and they like to follow step by step. And, and for me personally, I feel like cooking is a lot like driving. Um, and when you, uh, you know, I use this comparison a lot. If you're giving someone some driving directions, you don't say uh, drive north on 75 for 15 minutes and then turn right because you ha there's so many different variables out there that are going to affect the way that you cook. And so what we're talking about here is the address of where you're going is kind of like your final product of what you're looking for. And you have your directions here. Those are the driving directions or that's kind of like your GPS but you can also look at them and say, ah, you know what, I, I think that there's a better way to do this. So I'm gonna go halfway via the directions and then I think I'm gonna go this way a little bit and then I'll meet back up because you know your product. So we're gonna talk about our vegetable, fennel. This is uh, actually a cousin of a carrot. Uh, acts more like an onion though, I think. And so really when you start looking at this vegetable, we really want to kind of look at it in all its parts. So we have the fronds. This grows like this, right? This part's underground. This grows out of the top. So, you know, when you are, uh, there's actually a lot of this growing in my neighborhood, wild. You can walk around and see this frilly, uh, the, filly, the frilly fronds uh, kind of sticking up out of the ground. And you can smell it on the summer days too. And it's nice and warm. It's beautiful. Typically what I do when I buy this thing, you know, I'll buy six or eight heads of this and immediately when you get it home because you have to fit it in your fridge because nobody has a walk-in at their house you break it down and you just take the bulb off just like this two separate things this one will set aside and we'll look at the greens for a second these stalks there's really only one great way to eat these i feel like you can pickle them you can eat them raw there's a ton of fiber and when I say fiber, think kind of like celery, you know, those kind of strands, those strings that run up here. You, if you cut it crosswise, you're basically short, shortening those fibers and you make it edible raw. These long sticks like this, you can eat them kind of like, uh, if, you get a young, if you get young fennel like this, carrots, ranch dressing, like you could sit there, I could sit there in front of the TV and just kind of snack on those. I'll also take these and kind of just dice them up and pickle them if you want. That's just a little side thing. Then what we have is the greens. These are beautiful as kind of a, on top. Finish as an herb, right? Finish your dish as, as a finishing herb. So usually what I'll do is I'll take these, I'll kind of break down the big stalks at the house. These will go in their own little container off to one side. And then these containers of greens, I'll just get like a little glass of water and just stick them in there. They can sit on your countertop. They'll sit in the fridge. These will keep for a couple days in the fridge, just like this, sitting in a little glass of water. Anytime you want to add just a little uh, extra 
punch to your dish, this is a great thing to just drop right on top. Piece of fish, piece of roasted fish, this is fantastic. Treat this like an herb. All right, I'm going to set these off to the side here. We're going to talk about roasting this fennel first. So what we're going to do today is this is basically going to be a salad showing how many different ways you can use this beast, how many different ways you can use this vegetable. So what we're going to do is first we're going to, I'm just going to show you a, a quick way to kind of roast off the heads. And then we're going to uh, kind of pick them up in a pan here, serve it warm with a local honey vinaigrette. We're going to top it with some shaved raw fennel and then some of the greens with some goat cheese. All right. Oh, by the way, if, if anybody has any questions at all, just scream and holler at me, and we can kind of treat this as a chat as opposed to a class, because as soon as I look up and see that there's like 30 people right here, I start getting cold sweats, right? Because <laughs> this, this is like my worst nightmare, like as far as like if I were wearing no pants, that would be the only way it could be any scarier for me right now. Yes, I am. Yes, I can see. The one thing I did remember today was pants. All right, so look, we've gotten this far, right? We'll take this apart. I like to leave the stem on and then just simply slice it up the middle. You, this is kind of what I was talking about when I said this acts like an onion. You can kind of see the different layers on the inside, plus this little core. Since we're going to roast this right now, I, I always leave that core in. I leave these in whole like this. So we just take them and we... Chuck them in a pan. This is my roasting pan for the day. We're going to have kind of a magic of TV moment here halfway through. I'm assuming that it is. Now, that's where my, uh, my botany degree is going to kind of fail me. I, I don't know that much. I just know that, that effectively this is a bulb vegetable. I'm not entirely sure how that works because, you know, we traditionally treat carrot as a root vegetable. So we can call this a root vegetable. But then once you start getting, I mean, technically an onion is a root vegetable. You have sweet potatoes. There's so many different complexities in the vegetable realm. I'm going to say yes. How about that? And since I have an apron and a microphone, you just have to accept it as gospel because I'm the, I'm the professional here, right? So uh, I'm just going to take these and, and get them into my pan, trimmed up the middle. I want to make sure I save one raw to show you this. Just like this, all right? Simple. Now, uh, as per our recipe here, what I'll always do is I'll, I'll take these in a bowl. Let's do that. I actually have a bowl. Look, I remembered this too. Bowl. I always take a little salt and a little pepper and just season it. In this case, we're going to do a little coriander too. Coriander, as you all probably know, is uh, cilantro seed. For those of you that hate cilantro, and I know that you're out there, this doesn't taste anything like it. I'm going to put some of this in there, and I want, I want to pass this around and let y'all smell this, because this is beautiful. Y'all pa pass that around. Woo, I forgot that this will give me feedback if I go close to the. Do y'all ever eat Fruit Loops as a kid? Smell this and think about Fruit Loops, because that, that's exactly what it smells like. It's Fruit Loops, I think. I don't know if that's a selling point for you, or, but for me it definitely is. We're going to uh, toss this in just uh, a little bit of oil, canola oil in this case. You, honestly, you can use any oil. It doesn't really uh, We're Really what we need is fat. You could use bacon fat. You could use chicken fat, some schmaltz. Anything would be great. But really all we want is some fat, right? So uh, I, I personally use canola oil when I'm cooking. It's a neutral flavored oil, and it has a, lot of, it has a really high smoke point, so it doesn't burn, right? I would suggest maybe not using your $1 million bottle of fancy Italian extra virgin olive oil, because as soon as it gets hot, you pretty much should have used the cheap oil, the canola oil. So this is just going to get tossed. Can you all see this? It's just coated. That's it. It doesn't take much. You could probably already see that I have... I'm not, not using this recipe at all. This is really just kind of concept cooking. Into the pan, like that. Now you're going to add a little liquid. Uh, in this case, we're going to use some vegetable stock. Uh, to be quite honest, just like clear, cold water for me is just as good. We're kind of going to make this like roasted stock 
in our pan. This, so we're actually going to get two products out of this in a way. You know, one of the things that's really big for me as a cook uh, and honestly just as a human being here on the planet is that we're producing as little waste as possible and that we're using everything that we possibly can. And I'll show you uh, how we do that here. So uh, what we want to do is you're just going to hit it with, uh, this is more than anything else, just to create a little sauna. You want a little steam in there. So this is going to go in your oven. This is going to go in the oven that's been preheated at 400 degrees, a hot oven. And then all you're going to do is top it with some foil. You want it to be a nice, tight seal. What's that? Yeah, I suppose that's right, kind of a braise. If it were just straight oil, I mean, this is one of those things. This is a preference for me. I like cooking it with a little liquid. It makes it nice and tender. You could put these out on a, on a sheet tray and just roast them straight in the oven, no cover on them. You could do this on the grill if you wanted to. Uh, you could just, really what we're looking for is a nice soft piece of fennel. It's really hard to overcook this. That's the best part about working with vegetables is like, it's really, really hard to kind of screw it up. It's good. You can eat this raw right now. So if you can eat it raw, you're, I mean, really, you're, you're going to have a hard time messing this up. So this is going to go into the oven uh, about an hour, let's say an hour. That, you know, it, it all depends on how big the fennel is. If you get those big monstrous bulbs, obviously it's going to take a lot longer to cook. If you get the little teeny tiny ones like this, these might take uh, 45 minutes. But let's just say... Maybe set your timer for 45 minutes and then just start checking it. And the way that you know that it's done is you can take the foil off of this carefully, I might add, as it comes out of the oven. It's going to have a ton of steam. And you'll just uh, poke it with a knife. When you poke it with a knife, if the knife comes back out without any resistance, then it's done. Okay? So this is going to go into the oven. Into the oven like that, right? While this is in the oven, usually what I'll do is I'll make uh, my vinaigrette. I'm going to put this back over here. I'm going to reuse my bowl here because I did remember to wear pants, but I did not remember an extra bowl. Everybody's going to be okay with that. This, one, I, this one's for y'all right here, full of fennel. So vinaigrette, really, when we're talking about a vinaigrette, we're just talking about acid and fat, right? So acid can be anything from, obviously, vinegar. You can use citrus juice. You can use anything. Verjus, like you could have some green grape juice. I'm going to set these back here. And then your fat, again, can be anything. Uh, for me, I like to use the canola oil, again, just because it's a neutral oil. But you could use, this would be when you would want to use your nice olive oil, right? Something where it's not going to be hitting any heat. I kind of make, I make vinaigrettes the same all the time. I basically kind of do this ratio. Whoop. One part acid to two to three parts vinegar, or excuse me, fat, oil, pardon me. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to that one. And I use a little bit of mustard to hold it all together. So uh, mustard acts as an emulsification or an emulsifying agent which means it just stay, it makes your vinaigrette stay together, nice and creamy, as opposed to uh, just kind of an Italian dressing that breaks apart. So we really want to highlight this beautiful honey that we've got. This is a local wildflower honey from Dances with Bees. Honey is one of my favorites, by the way. I love honey. I always add uh, honey to my vinaigrettes, but in this case, it's this is, there's going to be a lot of honey. This is wildflower honey. I would use this over kind of a darker honey just because of the flavors that we're using. Fennel is such a mild flavor. I think that if you were to use a heavier, darker, uh, richer honey that it might cover up your, your fennel flavors a little bit. But that's just a personal taste, right? That's the best part about all this. So... Usually what I'll do is I'll kind of make this vinegar and honey and mustard paste is how I always start this, these vinaigrettes. 
And in this case, we'll chuck in a little fresh lemon as well. Okay, let's make a lot. Okay, is there a spoon? You can have pass me a spoon real quick. All right. So for me in this case, uh, since we're using this mustard as to make our dressing smooth, I'm going to opt for a smooth Dijon mustard as opposed to, say, a stone ground mustard. And what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, some of this Du South uh, kind of whole grain mustard, these pickled seeds, and we're going to finish the dish with that because it's also nice to kind of see this. This is almost like mustard caviar, right? So what we're going to do is my uh, our creamy Dijon here. This has a little bit of heat. This is, you know, pretty spicy. Add it to our bowl and just start whisking. This, the, uh, the Dijon, this is my yard. This is a, this is a French Dijon. But we're just trying to make this kind of honey, honey mustard, a honey mustard paste right here. Yeah. That's, then we'll kind of add our vinegar. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, really, when it comes down to it, if you're sitting there and, and you're panicking because you don't have fancy mustard, I mean, you could get away with French's yellow. I mean, th th this is really what, what we want is that kind of like that punch, the uh, acidity, and then also the, for whatever reason, the, the, the chemical compounds in mustard manages to make oil and, oil and water, oil and liquid emulsify and stay together. So I feel like this right here is the best time to season this because you don't have your fat in there. A lot of times fat kind of acts as a flavor inhibitor. So, and it's going to, it makes it a little more difficult to season. So I, I actually like to season this mixture right now. Woo! I've been instructed to hold on to the tent when the wind blows as an added element of adventure. All right, are we good? Yeah, if you start seeing the post lift up, let me know. And I'm, I, I, I didn't realize this when I signed on that I'm apparently supposed to go with the tent if it goes. So, it's going, going down with the ship. Okay, I'm gonna grab just a little taste. It's so. This is kind of goes with. What I was talking about with following these recipes is it's so important to taste your food as you cook. So, at, you know, I, I don't want you to read a recipe and say, oh, well, that needs to have a tablespoon of salt and just hit it without tasting it and then send it out to uh, your significant other's family that's over visiting or whatever and just hope for the best. Like, you want to taste and make sure that everything's okay. So at this point, this is a good time to taste. Oh, it's so good. This honey is so good. Honestly, you could just drizzle the honey on the dish and be done with it, but that's not much of a recipe, right? That's not why you're sitting here listening to me gab. I'm going to add a little lemon juice. Ooh. Lemon and fennel, is like, it's, that's a classic combination. Lemon and fennel always works. It, there's never a time that it doesn't work. All right, so this gets a whisk, and this is the part where we start talking about emulsification. It's where we want to kind of blend this all together so you get that nice kind of creamy uh, consistency in your vinaigrette. So what you do is you stir and add slowly. They always say that when you're adding your oil like this that you never want the stream to be larger or w wider than a pencil or maybe a chopstick. I don't know, but you kind of know where we're going with this, right? Just like a little stream. And what you're doing is you're slowly incorporating your oil instead of just like gobbing it all in at one time and then hoping that you could make it, you could mix it all in. Pretty easy, right? You could do this while you're watching TV.
After my very precise measurement here, I'm going to go ahead and taste again just to make sure. Beep. And we're done. So this, I'm going to, all right, I got to make sure that I don't like set off these speakers here. So I want, can you all see this okay? I kind of want to just see how, see that kind of creamy consistency here. And if you stop moving, you can see that there's not really any flat, fat globules or like little puddles of fat floating around. If it breaks, it breaks. We're not talking about hollandaise. This is a vinaigrette, right? You just whisk it again before you. Does that make sense when I say breaks? Like when it breaks, it separates. You just whisk it back together again. This is really just a chance for you to kind of show off, and you can use the term emulsification in a casual conversation at dinner, right? Oh, I don't know. My coffee hasn't kicked in yet, so let's not do spelling bee quite yet. Okay. Typically at this point, our fennel ought to come out of the oven. We're just going to let this kind of like, this is going to be sitting on the, uh, on the countertop, just kind of cooling. You can serve it warm. You can serve it cool. For me to get really fancy at the restaurant, we'll serve them whole and then put them whole onto a griddle and kind of get that charred crust on there. And then you can actually kind of plate it and get really fancy with how it goes on there. So while this is cooling uh, in, our, in our moment of uh, television magic here, we're going to shave some raw fennel now. I have this last bulb over here. This is crazy. Any of y'all have juicers at the house, like one of those masticating juicers that chews, chews up the vegetables and spits out the juice? Fennel juice is, uh, for me, like it's a thousand times better than wheatgrass. It's really strong. It's really clean. And everyone will look at you like you're bananas for drinking it. But it is so refreshing and delicious. You can take this just like this and just run the whole thing straight into that juicer and get some of the most delicious and it's really potent stuff. Bulb as well. This comes out this like when the juice, you wouldn't believe the color. It's unearthly. Like it is not from this planet. This super rich, dark green. I don't know exactly what vitamins are in it, but there have to be a million of them because it's just, I mean, it looks like medicine when it comes out. It looks like nature's medicine. That's really fun to actually like uh, make a granita out of. You can sweeten it and then lay it into a tray in the... Uh, in the freezer and occasionally stir it and have like a fancy pants snow cone. So this is totally edible raw, the bulb. So we're, we're, we've cooked it off now and we're also going to have this raw kind of crunch. So when you hear people talking about, you know, when you hear on TV, right, when you hear about uh, meat cookery, you always hear them talking about uh, when you cut your meat, you want to cut it against the grain, right? You're cutting against that muscle fiber that makes it uh, uh, tender when you chew it. It's not like you're going to be chewing on a piece of uh, bubble gum. And it's kind of the same thing with the vegetables. Uh, onions uh, are a great example and fennel as well. So when you look at this, you can actually kind of see these striations of the, the fibers running up here. Eating it this way, like if I were to eat it this way, you would have to pull against these fibers and they would all be kind of stuck up in your teeth like the worst kind of dental floss. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to cut those fibers and make them very short, which will make it very tender. Uh, you can do this with a knife. Uh, we have uh, mandolins. Uh, I don't know if you have one of these at the house. It's worth the investment if you're... Uh, Emergency room insurance is good because these things are a little scary. They, they, uh, they can take off fingers pretty quick. So what, what we do, just because you get this really nice, super thin, consistent product, is we use this mandolin. If you haven't seen one of these before, it's just a little board, and you can adjust this part and then run it across and slice, thinly slice whatever you are slicing, be it fennel or finger. We're just gonna, I'm going to run this out, just like this.
And you get these pretty little kind of arcs and rings in, into uh, your vessel. And one thing that I like to do uh, in a case like this is if you want to tenderize it a little bit more, you can always add a little vinaigrette to it right now right as you're prepping everything else. And it's almost like a vegetable ceviche, right, if that makes any sense. So the acid uh, in your vinaigrette here will kind of Break that down, make it a little softer, make it a little easier to eat. Grab, grab the glove. I'm going to heat up this pan also. Maybe, kind of. Woo! You can see it now, and I felt it on my hand. It's hot. All right, quick stir, just to coat. I love dishes like this because you can put this down in front of somebody. This really, when you think about it, aside from the vinaigrette, this dish has two ingredients. It has fennel and it has goat cheese, and that's it. So you really can kind of, uh, Showcase some know-how and wow people and say, wow, this is a really beautiful, complex dish. And you say, thanks, it's got, it's got two ingredients. So we're going to let this heat up. These are going to come out of the oven, right? This will be these kind of roasted, uh, kind of pale green color. Clearly, it's exactly the same as it was when I put it in there. But again, what we're looking for is just really soft. If it comes out of the oven after an hour and you're like, I, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This is still like really hard and crunchy. Put it back in the oven. Just let it keep going. You want it to be really nice and tender is what we're looking for. Okay? Now we went ahead and we kind of, uh, we sliced up some of this roasted fennel that we did earlier. But this was the one thing that I wanted to show you. So remember how when we, we wrapped up our fennel, and we tossed in a little vegetable stock or water and a little bit of oil with the salt and the coriander. This is the part that you don't ever want to throw out is this liquid right here. Can you see the kind of like the, we've got this beautiful kind of stock. It's got these kind of bubbles of fat in there. It's the same oil that's in our vinaigrette. Why, why don't we put it in our vinaigrette? Fennel juice. That's really good to add to a soup, a sauce. Like this, this would be something that I would put in a cup in the refrigerator. And if you're uh, making a little pasta, for example, and you've sautéed some vegetables and you're making your sauce, add that fennel juice at the end. And it's like that's, that's free money right there. All right. So I think for me what makes dishes like this really successful is you have a lot of contrast. So even though we've got just the one ingredient, we think about contrast. So we have the crispy fennel that's raw that's going to go on there. This is very sweet. This has a very pronounced anise flavor. Anise, we're talking about licorice, right? So this might not necessarily be the ingredient for you if you don't like black jelly beans. But for me, this is one of my favorites. Uh, cold and crisp, we're going to do hot and kind of soft. We're going to have the fat of this really fantastic goat cheese, and then we top it off with these raw greens. So all of that coming from just this one vegetable. So this is the part that we call mise en place in the restaurant. This is that in French means everything in its place. So now we basically have everything ready to kind of finish or build our salad. This step right here is just for fun. You're adding the element of heat, which means that you can caramelize the fennel if you want. If you don't have time and you've just got your fennel at room temperature or even cold, it's really good. You don't need to heat this up. But we're going to. So typically what I'll do is I'll take those whole fennel heads, roasted. Let's pretend that these are super soft and roasted. And I put them down face down into a pan or on the grill. It's already cooked, so the idea here is not that we're cooking, but that we're actually going to create this caramelized surface, and that's going to add a little extra flavor. 
Don't touch it. Don't poke at it. Just let it, just. Black burned edges. It's delicious. That's my favorite part. I'm going to take this out and heat up some stuff. So we've actually cut this up so that everybody can have a little taste. Totally. Absolutely. I would. This vegetable, I, I really like this vegetable because it works really well with sweet applications. You can use this in desserts. You can take fennel and grate it in the food processor, you know, or on the box grater and make a fennel cake instead of a carrot cake, for example. Sub it in. You can cook this down in maple syrup and vinegar and make this kind of like candied fennel. And I, everyone in my family kind of gets annoyed when I say this, but put it on top of some vanilla ice cream with some fennel that's been cooked down in maple and vinegar is insanely good. So we're just going to kind of add a little caramelized flavor here. And honestly, this is kind of like cooking with a cigarette lighter. So you're going to have you kind of have to bear with me here because this is really. Yeah, we're outside. This is not at our, this is not at home. And here's how we're just going to finish the entire dish up. I'm going to steal a plate. Is there one plate that I can just. Ooh, thank you. So we've got some really amazing goat cheese. This is from Decimal Place Farms. You can use any cheese here. This works really well with what you really want is salt. You want some salt uh, and kind of that acidic tang, which is one of my favorites. Thanks. So you can use a soft cheese like this, uh, some Pecorino Romano shaved with a vegetable peeler, some Parmesan, some Manchego, whatever. You, you just want to have something that's nice and kind of salty and, it's, and got a little tang to it. So here's how we Here's how we'll finish this. Personally, I feel like this is a pretty good opportunity to just chuck a little extra vinaigrette in there while it's hot. Ooh. You can have hot salads, right? All right. Never a dull moment. So we're going to pass out some samples of this for y'all in just a quick second here. But we're going to have this. This is kind of what I was talking about with that contrast. So look, this is the roasted fennel. And then you have the raw fennel. This is that the due, due south uh, stone ground mustard. In this case, they're... They're calling this the drunken mustard. I kind of like this to finish. Those little seeds, after they've plumped like that in the vinaigrette, they get really nice and soft, and they kind of pop, right? Just like a caviar. Fresh goat cheese. This is my professional technique. Don't tell. And now we were talking about using those fronds. Last little bit. These top bits. Typically at the, at, the real, at the fancy places, they try and get all the way down to just those wispy, feathery bits. And then that kind of like, that bit of stem right there, I think that that kind of goes into the stock pot a lot of times. Y'all, that's it. We just made we just made a two ingredient salad basically right here. So this is the we've got the roasted fennel that's topped with the marinated raw fennel, some really amazing goat cheese with the pickled mustard, and then topped off with even more fennel. That's it, just like that. All right, we're gonna pass out some samples here. Does does anybody have any questions at all? Everybody's okay? I'm gonna actually put more fennel in there. All right, perfect. No, no. I think that's it. Did I miss anything? Y'all, thank you very much. What's that? That's yeah. The tent didn't go anywhere, and I didn't faint in front of all y'all either. That was my other big concern.
Mercy. All right. Yeah, is there something I can do to help? Yeah, here, I'll do the cheese. Is my microphone still on? Oh, yeah. Can, is this thing still on? Can everybody hear me? So uh, Better Half is a little teeny tiny restaurant on 14th Street uh, down in Midtown. I, we're basically equidistant in, bet in between Georgia Tech, Atlantic Station, West Midtown, and regular old Midtown, like right there at 75. We're right in the middle, 14th St Street and State Street. We've got 40... Uh, 40 seats. We're in the old Cool Corners building. I don't know if y'all know about Cool Corners. That's an Atlanta institution. We're, we are actually in the original Cool Corners building right there. Thank you so much. I, I am obviously a little biased, but I love it too. Come on. I love it. Yeah, so uh, the, my favorite part about the restaurant is, is that uh, our kitchen is, you, you're sitting in the kitchen basically, so we have 10 seats. Uh, at the bar, but instead of having a wall of booze behind us, uh, that's the kitchen. So you see everything uh, from start to finish, and you can actually have a conversation with, there, there are actually humans that are producing your food, and we are wanting to make sure that we get to interact with everybody that's, uh, that we're cooking for. That's the best part about it. Sure. Oh, Mer that's that was a, a classic. I think that we can do that. That's so. That's the that's the a, a a point of pride for me in the restaurant is that the menu change. We're very seasonal. Uh, a lot of times we're making calls uh, to figure out what's going to be coming out of the ground uh, coming up soon. So our menu changes f uh, what feels like to me every 45 minutes. But we we change something on the menu every single day, and. We never repeat dishes. So we've never made the dishes before, and we put them onto the menu, and we run them for two weeks or so, and then you, you'll never see them again. It's this kind of like restaurant sketchbook is what we do. Yes. So we, we are open for dinner only Tuesday through Saturday starting at 530. We kind of say five, you know, 530 to 1030, 11, 1130. If the evening is a party, then we'll, we'll close when we close, right? So we would love to have you, uh, you know, make a reservation, give us a call. Uh, we're really active on social media, uh, Facebook, look us up, Better Half. Uh, I'm Better Half Cook on Instagram and Twitter, if you like all that. We, one of my favorite parts is, like, I really like to kind of take photos of the entire process. So you would get to see the fennel come in, the prepping, and then you get to see a final dish as well. So be sure to, to check us out.